are your suspicious antennas up just a little bit because the fact that AT&T is engaged in a massive antitrust fight over its proposed Time Warner, the timing of the two? Well, listen, it's hard not to be. Uh, this is very similar to early, you know, earlier in the uh, Trump administration, earlier in the year, when all these companies were coming to the White House, once they were probably worried about the new regulatory environment and they were announcing this deal or this new investment, perhaps it was an investment they had already announced, they were sort of re-announcing it. So listen, they want to be on Trump's good side. But, but, but remember what the economics is here? This is not how corporate tax cuts are supposed to raise wages, not because of bonuses, uh, not because of any kind of you know, one-time pay hike. It's because these companies are supposed to use the money, invest it, become more productive, more profitable, and then some portion of that will be reflected in higher wages. Uh, to the extent that this money is going to go into new investment, then that process can begin, but it's not going to be because of these sort of one-off payments. I, I get the one-off payments, uh, which are being made by Comcast as well uh, as Wells Fargo, but I mean, not Wells Fargo, excuse me, Comcast and AT&T, but for Wells Fargo and Fifth Third, there's an increase to min minimum wage. And on the AT&T front, there's an increase to capital expenditures, which will then theoretically yep. create or sustain jobs, Ben. What does it, I mean, does it really matter? Because we are seeing the impacts here. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Jimmy in that these are good things. You know, yeah. nobody would begrudge people these uh, increases. And the minimum wage increase, that's a thing that stays. Yeah, but right. he's right that the long-term play here is more investment in new equipment, new factories, new stuff to make workers more productive. That means they get wage increases, the kind of wage increases that don't drive up inflation, that the Fed won't get in the way of. I think the biggest question is, does Comcast's $1,000 bonus extend to CNBC contributors? <laughs> or CNBC employees? There's no more important question. Important question. But, but, you know, I tell you what, Jimmy, last night the news came out, right? Yeah. I mean, people were up in arms. I, I've never seen – are you surprised by how upset some people seem to be that families are getting a $1,000 bonus? Listen, there are some people who are really invested in the idea – that cutting taxes for business, even though you can find economists on both sides of the aisle who think that's a good idea, that they're convinced it's a terrible idea, it's plutocracy, and they're not going to work, and it's going to ruin the economy. They're very invested in the idea. And then to have, uh, you know, the next day, have, you know, or, or later in the day, suddenly have real money going into people's pockets, boosting their take-home pay, uh, it's a little bit jarring for them because uh, it doesn't fit with their political narrative. Hey, Jimmy, it's Michelle down here at the NYSC. Hey, Speaking of real money going into people's pockets, you sent over in your notes, I thought, a really important data point. 80% of Americans are going to see a tax cut. Only 17% think they will get a tax cut. I mean, that sounds like a real winner in terms of this becoming popular because the expectations must be very low. And when people discover they're actually going to have more take-home pay, I think the, thing, the polling turns around for certain on this thing, don't you think? Yes, I think, listen, you have extraordinarily low expectations, which really are out of sync with the reality. Uh, so, so you're going to have people who are going to be maybe getting tax cuts they didn't expect. On top of it, you have to just look at the macro economy. Uh, you had the unemployment rate. It looks like it's going to be headed under 4%, tight, you know, tighter labor market. Uh, you know, it should help wages pick up. We might actually begin to see a bit of a productivity boost, finally, for all that's going on in Silicon Valley. So there could be a lot of good things happening that are going to affect people's take-home pay that they just haven't really calculated. Yeah, I mean, I would just make one other point on the, the question of these investments and, and whether they're, uh, you know, really tell us something big about what's happening with the tax reform plan. They still pale in comparison at this point to all the dividends and buybacks that we've heard about uh, that have been reported that, you know, they're going to take a lot of this cash. Companies already are and send it back to shareholders, which is fine. You know, with share, we like shareholders. They should get rewarded for their investments. But if the long term goal of this thing is capex and higher wages, uh, you know, it's more important that we see that than we see all these dividends. And I think if if you tallied up all the announcements these companies have made on wages and bonuses, it would still be way less than what they've announced in dividends and share buybacks. Yeah, so in your mind, what could they do, Ben, then, to make it less politically? The optics of the same day yeah. in industries, <laughs> banking, yes. those involved with net neutrality like Comcast. They all want something. It, it makes or... it, they all want something <laughs> or just got something. And there's a phrase that's used often in government circles around President Trump and in corporate circles, and that is tweetable deliverables. The president loves tweetable deliverables. He loves to be able to say, this company did this, this country did this when I went to visit. And that's what these people are giving them. AT&T is giving them Boeing, Fifth Third, the others we mentioned. They can now be in a Trump tweet saying, we did tax reform, we did tax cuts, and look what these great companies are doing. So that's what this piece of it yeah. really is. The, the bigger yeah. question is long-term, how do they operate? 
Yeah, there's, there, there's also another jobs component. This is a full employment act for journalists. Uh, yeah. Uh, because now all these and accountants have to be tracking and tax attorneys these, uh, and lawyers. They're, they're going to be tracking these companies. They're going to be tracking their investments, pay increases, jobs. Uh, to see, see if finally in the end uh, we actually see the kind of gains that they're promising. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.